when you talk about virtue signaling, when you talk about people trying to project some type of of uh, aura onto themselves as if, look at me, I, I'm the leader, I'm blazing trails, I'm a trailblazer, yada, 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 which, whatever, I don't care. But these are the things as a football player, as a football player, I mean, you got to understand where I'm coming from with this. This is, I've lived this life, my entire life. Who else can be authentic about the perspective of it other than someone who's lived it, right? Sarah Fuller reveals halftime speech she gave during Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt versus Missouri. No, 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 no. Oh my God, no. You want to know why no? Because on a football team, people who stand up to give halftime speeches who don't have the credibility or the uh, rapport with the actual team itself to be in a position to actually get the a reaction from players by voicing your concern and motivate and motivating your teammates it's not going to go well when you don't have the level of rapport and credibility within the team and that's not to say that it's not going to go well as in people are going to be like yo shut the fuck up that's just what they'll be thinking and it's not because she's a female at all because there have been players I've witnessed with my own eyes who have done this kind of thing. And we're going to go into this article in just a moment. There have been players who have done this kind of thing where they have stood up and been a voice in the locker room when players are getting ready for a second half in a game where we are, we may not be winning or we may have had a very poor first half and now we're trying to rebound and make some adjustments. But there's always... That guy, and Spice Adams even did a video on this. There's always that guy who starts giving a speech at halftime. And this is a guy who doesn't play, but maybe 10 snaps a game. This is a guy who hasn't been a starter his entire time. And he got pulled up from the practice squad a year ago. And now he wants to give us guys who are on the field already for 30, 40 plays a lecture in a speech about how we can all do better. Sit your fucking ass down. Nobody wants to hear that shit. Sit your ass down and get ready for the second half. We're professionals here. We know what needs to be done. We don't need you of all people to tell us. That's how that goes in a, in a regular environment, depending on the tension of the moment. Somebody might stand up and say that, but most are thinking it like, yo, shut the fuck up, sit down. <clears throat> so let's go into this a little bit. It says here, when she made history Sunday by becoming the first woman to play in a Power 5 conference football game, Vanderbilt kicker Sarah Fuller also brought championship experience to the 0-8 Commodores, fresh off of a Southeastern Conference women's soccer title. Okay, yes, like we, you know, she, yes, we know she wants, she was part of the SEC championship winning team. Soccer, football, two different sports, two different codes of conduct, two different uh, codes of etiquette uh, and, and, and expectations and, and, and stripes in, in, in earning your stripes. Expectations in earning your stripes are, 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 are different. They're different. I'm not going to say that they're worlds apart because it's team sports. It's it's all they they're, they all kind of lay within the same kind of of uh, messaging, but the way things operate a little bit different. Uh, it says here in a halftime speech during Sunday's 41 to zero loss to Missouri, Fuller said players on the team weren't cheering each other on, and they needed to adjust their mentality if they wanted similar success. I will not argue against that particular point because that's true. That's true. A big portion, a big part of team sports 
is support. In the NFL, when the offense or when the defense is on the field, if we're an offense that just came off or and we, we either scored or we punted and now the defense is going to be on the field, we go, you know, us, the, the players who are on the field, we go to the bench, we get coached up by our coaches, we take a look at a few of the plays. Generally, by the time the defense gets out there and by the time they're one or two plays in, once we've gone through all of our uh, post, post-drive uh, uh, coach, coaching points and gotten a drink or whatever it may be, we get up. And we walk up to the sideline, starters, backups, everybody, and we support our teammates, especially when you know you're in a game where, you know, if it's a tight game, yeah. But in general, that is that is that is that is par for the course. You get up, you support your teammates. Because who's gonna have your team, who's gonna have your back if in this entire uh 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 event, who's gonna have your back uh in this whole thing other than your teammates? Nobody. It's just you and your teammates. So yes. That is 100% correct, and, and, it's, and it's good that she understands that. <clears throat> if I'm going to be honest, I was a little pissed off at how quiet everybody was on the sideline, she said per ESPN. We made a first down, and I was the only one cheering, and I was like, what the heck? What's going on? <clears throat> so this is somebody... This is somebody who understands winning culture. She understands that. And part of winning culture is the support system. And that's probably something that Vanderbilt is very much lacking, very much lacking, is any kind of support or culture within the program that can nurture success. That's why they fired Derek Mason the next day after this game, Uh, you know, and just again, I'm not saying that she doesn't know what she's talking about because what she's saying is actually true. I'm saying that I'm saying that you can't she is new into that environment. She is she has a couple things going against her, and none of them are her gender couple things going against her you are new to that environment you are a new member of that team uh as of i don't know if i'm not sure exactly when she joined the team but she did you know she joined the team recently she's she hasn't been on there for any amount of years uh you are new to the team you are at a position as a kicker that does not inherently hold the same level of uh, I won't say respect because they're respected. I, I will say they don't hold the same weight and influence over the team's morale that you would find out of a linebacker, a quarterback, an offensive lineman, uh, a defensive lineman, any other position, every other position outside of of kicker. <laughs> every other position has there there are players who can develop the weight of influence that the team responds to when they talk you don't have that so you are new and you're a kicker you don't really have the influence in the locker room to to make statements to the team to affect the morale you don't have that it's not going to work and it could i mean it could in a lot of times generally it does and and long snapper as well is one position. I mean, hell, long snappers, long snappers on, on the damn uh, on the depth chart, they can be defensive linemen. I mean, they, they that's they might even have more weight and influence. But uh, this is a situation where you're just better off biting your tongue in that. You you know, do you know what kind of team you're on? Do you know how much, how, how much or how little success this team has been having? You are, yes, coming from a championship team in a different sport, but that championship pedigree has not even been, there's not even been a whiff of that in that locker room at that time. And in that position that they're in, and, and in your, your position, your unique circumstances, as a new player and being a kicker, 
it's better to just leave it be. Leave it be. Don't address it. Don't address the, the entire team at the halftime point of a football game. That's something better saved for the end of practice where after a hard day's work, everybody can be at attention and you can speak on a more intimate level about your experience as a championship player in, in soccer and how you want to help to bring some of that some of that pedigree into the football program. That, I feel like, would be well-received by players who whose respect you are trying to, to earn and whose uh, situation you are trying to help improve. So, you know, just bear that in mind as we continue on and read through the rest of this. Uh, and then this is Courtney, Courtney Cronin, whatever. I just got off a Zoom call with Vanderbilt kicker Sarah Fuller, who detailed the halftime speech she gave and the reception it received. I had coaches come up and say, I've been wanting to say that for a while now. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You ain't even wanted to say shit for a while, coach. If you was... You know what? If that's the case, then it's good that all you motherfuckers got fired or are getting fired at the end of this season because... That's some terrible, that's some dog shit ass coaching. If that's the case, shit, you need to be hollering at the coaches, not the players. Shoot. But uh, it says here, if I'm going to be honest, I was a little pissed off at how quiet everybody was on the sideline. We made a first down and I saw that I was the only one cheering. And I was like, what the heck? What's going on? And I tried to get them pumped up. And I was like, you guys need to start, need to, need to start need to cheer your team on. My main thing was during the SEC tournament, my entire team was cheering the entire time. It didn't matter if we were in the locker room or if they were on the sidelines. I think they're, I think they're, ugh. I think, damn, who wrote this? I think that's what won it for us. Everybody was cheering nonstop. I don't think that won it for you. I just went in there and I said exactly what I was thinking. I was like, you need to be cheering each other on. This is how you win games. This is how you get better is by calling each other out for stuff. And I'm going to call you guys out. We need to, to be supporting one another. If we get a first down, if an interception happens, it's our fault. We need to be lifting each other up. That's what a team's about. I think this team has struggled and that's been part of it. We really just need to build that team camaraderie where they can all lean on one another. It was an adjustment going from that team mentality where, hey, we're all here supporting one another and just wanting to bring that to this team. Again, there's some truth in what she's saying. Some of the things that she is saying in this are legit. She's talking about the culture in general, if you if you're reading behind the reading behind the lines on this, she's talking about the culture that the football team has is not a supportive culture uh, that then helps uh, to uplift your teammates, and and it does help to have that support. You know, you see it all the time in sports when a defensive back knocks a ball down and on a third and long on the sideline and he gets hyped, his teammates are right in his face getting hyped with them. That's the element of culture, football culture, that she's that she's alluding to, of team sports culture that she's alluding to. You have to be there for your team. So she is right on that. And that that's, you know, there, there's a couple of, obviously there's a couple things, a couple ways that she says things that are, you know, they're a little bit, they're they're slightly na naive in in their in their in in the process in the thought process, but it's not it's it's not she's not wrong in what she's saying. It's just in your position, it's going to be hard to get a response from people in that because guess what? Guess what? They didn't score a point. 